Today, on a more personal note, I wanted to unpack the following question. Why did my wife and I buy a home in Victoria, BC? There are a few components that make up the answer to that question, and buying a home is a pretty significant financial decision. Some of you may wonder, as a residential agent, why would you buy a house when prices were falling and conditions as a buyer were going to improve? Well, sometimes you're compelled by your own personal objectives, but also it's just the right house in the right neighborhood. I want to talk about why Victoria, why this house, and why now in this video, as well as give you guys a bit of a house tour. So let's get into it. So why Victoria, BC? Well, this is my hometown. My wife is from Shawnigan Lake, which is about 45 minutes to an hour north of Victoria. And in a lot of ways, we are lifelong Southern Vancouver Islanders, although I did spend a little bit of time playing the CFL going to university in Ontario. So I do have a little bit of perspective on the rest of Canada, as well as a few Canadian winters under my belt. So I've seen some other places. There was never really a decision about where to live, but just an unspoken agreement that we both knew Victoria was home and always felt like home. Now, there are a few reasons outside of just our gut instinct and you know familiarity with the place as far as why we would love to call Victoria home, which are really just recapping some of my five pros and cons list that I'll leave a link to up at the top of the screen. Number one for us, I think if you're planning to have a family, this is a safe, welcoming place to have kids. Communities are extremely welcoming. Everyone is very friendly and you really don't have a whole lot of uh, beeping horns and people getting mad at each other. People genuinely love living here and are pretty friendly as a consequence of that. Number two, I do think this is one of the most beautiful cities in North America. And number three is sort of tied to that is the fact that you have all of these activities that you can do right at your doorstep from Victoria, BC. So whether it's hiking, surfing, skiing, all of that beauty is accessible to you and it's tied to some outdoor activities, which I personally like to incorporate into my lifestyle. For me, number, I guess number four or number three or number one, wherever we're at, I mean, it's very mild weather. We don't have those crazy winters that you get in other parts of Canada where you're shoveling snow in March. If it snows here, maybe it snows once and then it's gone a week later. It is wet, but it's not as wet as our counterparts over on the mainland in Vancouver who get uh, more than twice the amount of annual rainfall as we do in Victoria. And I think maybe the last thing is just the fact that there are tons of lifestyle options in Victoria and proximity. So we can spend a night out in downtown Victoria. We can shuffle home to rural countryside where our friends are staying or we can get out from surfing that morning into town for a great night out and then back to our neighborhood here in Esquimalt within 10 minutes from downtown. So the proximity and variety, whether it's you know rural, very secluded living or downtown bustling city, it's all kind of here in one distinct package. And I don't find myself just speaking anecdotally, looking for more metropolis or more countryside. So if I need to decompress and kind of get away from people, I could just drive up to Central Saanich or get out to Machosan or Souk. And if I want big city living and the feeling of metropolis and culture and activity and energy, I don't really feel like I need to go to Vancouver or Toronto to get that. We have that all in our downtown core. So hopefully that makes it abundantly clear why we decided to call Victoria, BC our home long term. But that brings me into my next question, which is why this house? Why now? And why this neighborhood? Why this house? Well, we were casually looking for a property. We knew that uh, getting into a detached house was something that was on our uh, goals. We worked very hard to make it happen. And of course we did, but I will say that uh, under those kinds of market conditions, it was not the best time to be buying residential property in Victoria. We were just on the tail end of peak market conditions. This was in May when we went unconditional on this home and there were five offers. So we did have to go a healthy amount above asking and did submit a few other things to the seller. Nevertheless, felt like it was something we would zoom out from in five to 10 years and think was not of much concern, partly as a consequence of us being able to access fairly cheap credit, um, but also just through, for the fact that this house actually was a good house. And I feel like I have a pretty good handle on some of that as a residential agent, just assessing some of those things that make buying a primary and the configuration of the primary a good idea. The first reason why was because of the neighborhood. This is in Saks Point, Esquimalt. So we're about a block and a half from uh, Saks Point Park. 
And we've got some incredible stuff right around us as well as the walkability or village aspect that I love about Victoria. You know, we can walk to coffee shops, grocery stores, restaurants without having to jump in the car and drive, which is also a, a piece of the community aspect. We were fortunate to be in here before Esquimalt Rib Fest, so we enjoyed the heck out of um, heading down the road to Bullen Park and sharing a few beverages and ribs with friends. But outside of that, I think we also saw that there was just long-term, maybe a bit of a value or upside potential in Esquimalt versus other parts of Victoria that have already run past this by a healthy margin. You know, looking at uh, other neighborhoods on the southern coastline of Victoria, like Fairfield, the James Bay, um, even into Oak Bay, we saw that this size of home at the price it was offered was a reasonable proposition and offered us some potential for upside in the future. The other aspect that we looked at and that you should all look at as purchasers is what is our time horizon or how do we establish whether this is a long-term 10 plus year, five plus year purchase versus something that's a bit more of a short-term solution. Uh, so for us, we were trying to assess the viability of whether this home could be reconfigured based on our needs as our family expands. And it certainly did that. And another aspect of it is just the fact that it's really unique. I'm a sucker for character homes. As you can see uh, some of the wainscoting behind me. This is in fact a character home. It's more than 100 years old and uh, has some really cool features like 10 foot ceilings, uh, this beautiful fur wainscoting and uh, some cool details that we saw that looked pretty appealing to us. Open airy spaces are something that attract us, but also the ability to sort of make something our own and have a you know a clean home that also gave us some potential to improve and make changes based on our style was something that was attractive to us. So I thought I'd flip this around and just give you guys a bit of a house tour, sort of tell you about where things are currently, what our plans are in the future. We did move into this with the home configured quite a bit differently than it is currently, but we also wanted to picture how we live and what makes the most sense for our lifestyle. This space actually was set up as a living room, but you know, as I'm thinking about the original intention of the room with these coffered ceilings and the wainscoting, you know, the original owner spent a lot of time putting stuff like these built-ins and stained glass elements into this space as an entertaining room. So we are playing with uh, some pieces in here, just trying to figure out what kind of style works best. With this, uh, whether we paint the wainscoting and all the trim white or not remains to be seen, but it is all oak flooring underneath this. Uh, what's in the kitchen is actually a slightly newer revision, um, but there's thin board oak under this, which was actually laid over original fur. So um, kind of an interesting combination. You've got like 50s or 60s oak flooring underneath this carpet. But for us, you know, we sort of pictured ourselves kind of entertaining in the space, and I imagine that will continue. Um, where this second bedroom actually, and you can see some of this thin board oak, has become kind of our, you know, den or living space. So, you know, we've got a TV set up, um, little media consoles coming here. We've got some books and, uh, you know, this is kind of a nice bright space, place to read, place to watch some TV. So that made more sense to us than having a couple of bedrooms down here that ultimately we wouldn't use that often currently. Now that's part of the um, you know, change or reconfiguration that could occur moving forward. But for now, we've kind of set this up based on um, our lifestyle and how we live. So this is my current office. Again, you can see you've kind of taken up some of the flooring. It's a little bit rough, requires a bit of a refinish, but uh, we will get to that at some point. Um, a lot of painting has gone on in here. It's kind of three colors before. And uh, you will see a few videos kind of capturing some of this imagery moving forward. This is our backyard, faces south. And there's a big deck off the kitchen. So nice sunlight, something that's really important to us to have a nice bright space. And then uh, in the kitchen again, we've got a set of west facing windows. Those 10 foot ceilings are very, very evident in here. It feels nice and bright and airy. And also just as an eat-in space currently gives us some room to um, expand or improve, which is fitting into the you know potential for upside in the future we could go with a pretty significant you know kitchen and island combo in here uh, in the future coming upstairs um, i will mention there's a basement with some sweet potential likely end up using that you know for guests and or um, in-laws um, nevertheless um, it's there and again more sort of utility for us and for other people moving forward if we ever decided to sell in the future um, dressing room and 
Rudy's chambers up here. This is where we've decided on this crate. It might do some built-ins or laundry or something up here. I will show you a little bit of the primary. Uh, there is an ensuite up here, but the thing I wanted to show you was the fact that we've got really cool views. Um, you can see the ocean, you can see you know, a little bit of evidence of the Olympic Mountains way off in the distance. You know, another piece, something that attracted us to this space, paint, 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 paint. And a second bedroom up here. There's an ensuite in the master. And that's pretty much our house. So um, nice south facing yard and uh, lots of room for us to improve and make this space our own. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed that little tour. Do you think we got it right with this dining space? Uh, do you think you would have put that little den in the front? And does that actually work functionally? There's not a lot of flow here or open concept. Uh, but we kind of found that more and more we find ourselves just living just the two of us or having, uh, you know, smaller groups of friends together and then having huge open spaces isn't necessarily conducive to how we like to live. So um, I'll certainly keep you posted as we make some improvements along the way, um, whether it's kitchen paint, um, you know, maybe doing floors and stuff in here. And uh, if I have any style questions, I might just bounce them off the YouTube crowd and see how you guys feel about it. Um, but for now, me and Rudy are going to sign out and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.